Come on, let's just begin to worship God. Amen. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I, all the things that we can say, we love you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We exalt your holy name. You alone are worthy of the glory. You alone are worthy of the honor. You alone are worthy of the praise, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to see another day. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for our, our right mind, our health, our strength, Lord God. We love you today, and we just thank you. We honor you. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. We shall be rejoicing. Somebody didn't get up this morning. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Wasn't able. So we just thank God. We just thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Such a great God, such an awesome God, such an on time God. You're worthy, Lord God. We exalt your holy name. We lift you up today, Lord God. Have your way in this service today, Lord God. Allow us to see you for who you are, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on, Facebook family. Just begin to praise him. Just begin to worship him. Just begin to exalt his holy name. You he's worthy. 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 We love you today, Lord God. We love you today, Lord God. We love you today, Lord God. Despite what it looks like, Lord God, we love you today, Lord God. We trust you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Great. 
the name. You're the name. God is big enough. I don't care what it looks like. Hallelujah. I trust him. I trust the promises. I trust his plan for my life. He's big enough to handle it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I felt like I could do without this microphone. Hallelujah. Everybody stand to your feet just one more time. You all were singing that song, and I was thinking, God is worthy. He's worthy on Monday. He's worthy on Tuesday. He's worthy on 
on Wednesday. He's worthy on Thursday. He's worthy on Friday. He's worthy on Saturday. He's worthy on Sunday. He's worthy when you sick. He's worthy when you tired. He's worthy when we don't have the answer to the election yet. He is worthy of all praise at all times. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. God, I glorify you tonight. Hey, I give you honor and I give you praise on tonight, oh God. Hallelujah. It's time for us to step out of our comfort zone. Hallelujah. I know it's Wednesday night and it's just a few of us here. But it's time for us to step out of our comfort zone and give all praise and honor to the one who loves us despite us. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to God. I have to stay on target because when I think about, hey, when I think about the places that I stood in, the fear that I've had to endure, not knowing whether a sister or a mother was going to live or going to die. Huh? Thank you, God. But I thank God that I can recall some of the scriptures, some of the words. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. Absent of this body. Present with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to come out of Romans 8 on tonight. Because I just stopped by tonight just for a few minutes. I don't have a lot. But I want to encourage you on tonight. With all that we have going on, with all that is going on in this world, a lot of times it's not even about us. We got to come out of that and look at the world as a whole. We know who we are and whose we are. But we've got to think about those that are struggling. We've got to use what God has given us, the love, the compassion, and stop thinking about ourselves. Our suffering. So tonight I'm going to read Romans 8 and I'm going to start in 18. And first lady, I'm like you, I'm going to read it in its entirety. Because it needs to be read. Romans 8, starting in verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope. Subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time, right now. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, 
the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, Lord have mercy, who can be against us? What can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors, more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah, you can be seated. I won't be before you long. I really just stopped by tonight to encourage. I, I've been having to encourage myself. So, so as we have walked through this pandemic and these things that are going on, I don't care how holy you think you are. I don't care how long you've been walking with God. There's going to be some things that are going to happen that you're going to have to say, Lord, I need some encouragement. And that's where I'm at now. But I reckon, and this was my mother's favorite scripture. And when she passed away, we, you know, like we do, we went through the house and we boxed everything up and we, started saying, well, I want this, and I want that, and, and it was unanimous that I would get her Bible. And I couldn't open it up for a long time after I got it. But I got it, and uh, years later, I opened it up. And she had written in the back of her Bible, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. My mother died in 2005. It took me a year without having to use my phone to find that scripture in the Bible. Even though I had heard it, it took me as I was just, I could have looked it up, and put, but I didn't. And I don't know why I didn't, but I was just in Romans 8 one day reading. And I happened upon this scripture. And she suffered before she left here. But she had the word of God. This 
this was assurance to her. And in these times that we living in right now, we need an assurance. People can tell us things. You can call me and I can say you're more than a conqueror, but people won't be assured because things are still going the way they're going. Now, we're going to look at Romans, of course, we know the writer of this book is Apostle Paul, and this letter was written to the Christians in Rome. And I love chapter 8. The reason why I love it is because it begins and ends with statements that assure us of the security that we have in this relationship with God. It tells us that what it reminds me of is that this security that we have in God has nothing to do with our ability to do anything, to get saved, stay saved. It's, it's, that's why I love this when I read it. It reminds me that this has nothing to do with anything that I can do or have done in order for God to continue to love me, care for me, protect me. We are justified solely by his grace and the redemptive work that was done on the cross. Don't forget that, people of God. That's it, period. You don't have to say a whole lot before it and a whole lot after it. That one statement right there says it all. Romans 8 is a reminder to us that we will share in God's glory. But we must also share in Christ's suffering, including the everyday suffering that we go through, the pandemic, the racial injustice, the, 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 all the things that are going on right now. We have to share in that suffering. That, that's, that's, part of the, the, that's part of what we are. We are what God uh, is. He saved us. He saved us by his work, but Jesus also suffered for us, so we're going to suffer. It rains on the just as well as the unjust. I used to hear that all the time when I was there, and I thought, what does that mean? If I be good, and if I try to live right, then I shouldn't have to go through what she's going through or he's going through. Mm -mm, it's not so. But verse 18 reminds us that our suffering is not in vain. So as we, you know, I began to read Romans chapter 8, I, I got down to the part where um, it talks about, well, it starts out where I started at in 18. And uh, it says that I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For creation waits, it says, in eager expectation. But I kept asking as I was reading this, I said, I asked the Lord, we're more than conquerors, but, but what are these things that you're saying that we should be able to conquer or that, we, that you expect us to conquer? Well, look at what the times we're living in right now with the pandemic, the racial injustice, the criminal justice, inequality, discrimination, violence, abuse, mistreatment, division, the killing of our young men and women, depression. Ripping children from their parents. These are all the things that we have, we're living through right now. Voter suppression, lack of health care, poverty, people are hungry, homelessness. Basic needs are not being met. It's injustice as a whole. It's suffering. But Paul reminds us that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us, and Paul reminds us of that. He says we are more than conquerors. So I went and looked at that, and I said, well, if you conquer something, you done won, you subdued them, you overcame, you prevailed, you survived. So why is he telling us here that we are more than conquerors? Why are we more than conquerors? And you know what? All that sounds good, that we got through this. I made it through that. I didn't die in that. 
But how can I be sure? Because this is what people want to know today. When we talk to people and when we're ministering to people, it's easy for us to say, look at the promises in the word of God. Or this is what the word of God says. People want to know how they can be sure that they can be more than a conqueror. That God still loves them when they're going through. That God still loves them when they're hungry, when they're homeless. How are you going to minister to them and tell them this and they're standing there? And I ask the Lord that myself, how can I get that across to them? That even though you're living on the street, you're more than a conqueror. They're hungry. They're oppressed. When you're being treated unfairly, when you can't pay your rent and it's nothing that you've done to make it happen, or maybe nothing that you've done wrong. When you're in physical and mental pain and you're on your bed of affliction or you've gotten that diagnosis and you've been in church every Sunday. How am I more than a conqueror? That's what I ask. How can I believe all of these promises that I'm reading every day in the word of God and how can I help somebody else to understand that? Well, I got good news for you tonight. Despite all this going on in this world, we are still more than a conqueror. You are more, and I am more, than everything that's going on in this world. And I'm going to tell you why. We do not have to assume or wonder if God loves us, if he still loves us after we've done some things that we should not have done, been some places we shouldn't have went and been with some people we had no business being with. Guess what? God still loves you. You are still more than a conqueror. And the reason why I am assured of this it's because it's nothing that he has to do. He's already done it. It's already done. So that's why I can assure you that he loves you. I can assure you that you're going to make it through that. I can assure you that even though things look bad right now, God loves you. We're not waiting on God to do nothing. He's already done it. So every time I find myself now in a situation, I don't have to wonder if God loves me. I don't have to wonder if he's going to help me through this. God already sent his son. It's done. Point blank. You don't have to think about it anymore. You don't have to worry with it when you make a mistake. We've all been in some places. We've all done some things and said some things and, and moved to the right when we should have been to the left or moved back when we should have been in front. But I come to encourage you today. You can have that assurance that God loves you and that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you because of the work that has already been done. How's that for, for not having to lay awake at night? How's that for not having to worry about somebody mistreating you? Are you not being given what you deserve? Are you being talked about? You don't have to worry about it. That assurance is there. He's already done it for you. His love for us is already done. God has already offered up his son. So I stand here tonight to tell you, we don't have nothing to worry about. They ain't counted all the votes, but when they count them up and declare the winner, nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. No matter who's in the white house, no matter who's in the red house, the blue house, or the green house. I have my assurance right here. That's my assurance. That no matter what may come my way in the form of suffering, in this world, 
None of these things will defeat me. Because they cannot defeat God. And he's already done it for me. I'm more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. So when we are ministering to people, when we are talking to people, and and I'm not one, I can't quote everything in the Bible, but I can tell you some promises of God. And and people are going to say to you, well, people make promises and break them all the time. God can't break it. He can't lie. And besides that, he's already done it. He loves you. He's already, it's already done. So even though you may be homeless, you may be hungry, you may be hurting, you can still have the assurance that God has already done it. That is good news, y'all. That is good news. When I get into this word and I start reading it and, and meditating on it, it's good news that we can't be defeated. He said we were more than a conqueror, not just a conqueror. Somebody ought to give God some praise for that. You more than a conqueror. You cannot lose. You can't do it. And this is what we have to understand as people of God before we can go and tell somebody else. How assured are you when things come upon us? Can you still smile? Can you still go home and sit down? Can you still tell somebody? God loves you. He's already done it. We can't be defeated. We're more than conquerors. And this in itself, when I went into, when I, every time I read Romans chapter, chapter 8, it reminds me. When I, I think about this, it changes the way I live because I'm more than a conqueror. And if it changes the way I live, then it changes the way I view life in general. It doesn't make me puffed up and make me walking around thinking I don't care what goes on. I'm more than a conqueror. It humbles me before a mighty God to know that while we were yet still in our sins, that he loved us so much That he said, let me give you an assurance so you won't even have to think about it. You won't even have to wonder about it. You won't even have to lay awake at night. It's simple. God loves us. And the assurance is there. And because that assurance is there, that lets me know that there is nothing that can separate me from the love of God. It doesn't matter where I'm at. It doesn't matter what's going on in my life. You can't take that away from me. You can't take it away from me. I can't even give it away because God gave it to me freely. Hallelujah. So I just stopped by to encourage you tonight and just let you know that the sufferings of this present time and the things that we are going through, you don't have to lose sleep over at night. You don't have to wild out. You don't have to to rise up and, and, and talk crazy. You don't have to do none of that. You don't have to lose no sleep. You just remind yourself that you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. I thought, my God, if I done conquered some things, I'm good. What do I need to be more than a conqueror? And he said, you are because I made you that way. Because nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet and just give God some praise for that, for just that, for just that alone, that alone. And if I'm more than a conqueror tonight, then I'm more than a conqueror when I lay down tonight and when I get up in the morning and when I go to work 
and when I get in my car and when I get ready to face whatever is getting ready to come upon me, I got to remind myself that nothing, nothing will be able to separate me from the love of God. And that's even when I bring shame upon myself. That's even when I don't do the right things. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. God, we love you. God, when we realize how much love that you have for us, hallelujah. God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you honor on tonight. And God, I am just in awe of you. In awe of you. That you look down on us. That you look down through time. And realize, hallelujah, that we couldn't do this on our own. We are not capable of it. Jesus. But God, you, you sent your only son. Hallelujah. You let go of him. You sent him. You knew what he was going to go through for me. Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. And we thank you, God, that we can never never be separated from you in this life and beyond. So we just thank you. We praise you. We love you on tonight. We give you all honor. We give you glory. We give you praise in this place on tonight. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Thank you, God. word has resonated in your spirit. Don't miss this opportunity to give God your, your hands. Give him your heart and allow him to lead you. Because one thing that we're sure of in this life is that there will be suffering. But based on the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the glory which will be revealed is greater than anything that we have to endure on this side, this side of heaven. So we offer that opportunity to you watching via Facebook. We offer you that opportunity to put your name in the comments. Give Christ a chance. Get to know him for yourself. Thank God for my grandparents and my, my parents and my aunties for introducing me. Something is different when you get to know it for yourself. So tonight's your opportunity. It don't have to be Sunday. Time is winding up. Give God a chance. Truly. Come on, let's give God another hand clap of praise. God bless you. Don't forget. Good. He's so good. He defies the vocabulary that we have. We don't know how to say thank you. So we'll do the best that we can. Best that we can with what we got to work with. To let God know that we love him. Don't forget that we bless you. Bless you in your heart and 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 your heart say thank you to everyone that has given those that are our virtual family, our virtual members. We picked up some virtual family. We thank God for you. 
for continuing to uh, partner with us in this effort, helping this word get out, even in the midst of a pandemic. God is still blessing and keeping us beyond ways in which we can back and so we want to say thank you. Don't forget every Sunday, every Sunday right here, 11 o'clock, in-person worship, 3109 Thomas Lane. Just ask that you would get her a tad bit early so we can get your temperature. Make sure we're following the protocol. Put in a safe environment. We invite you, you and me, to come on into worship. Also, every Tuesday morning, every Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock, there's our call in number and access code. If you need to call in, join us in the prayer and the prayer line. Please help me now. Is the time. And listen, I know what you're saying. Some of us are thankful we need to pray that our candidates are doing. I'm more interested in God's will be. So no matter who wins, my God says heart of a king in the hollow of his hand. So my prayer is that God, I stay close to you so that my life can be a resemblance who you call me to be. In spite if I'm happy or sad, if I'm up or down, I don't want that to affect how God wants to use me in this last and evil day. So we, we ask that everyone would take down the information that's on the screen, that's on the, uh, write down the access code and call in every Tuesday morning at eight o'clock and touch and agree about um, whatever special prayer requests you may have. But we wanna lift up our nation as well as our churches. Um, I missed it Sunday and I would like to say we are definitely in prayer for families Bishop Ford, Christ Temple, um, as well as uh, Bishop Rance Allen. Young man, he's popular for singing, but he was most powerful when he was preaching. So we want to continue to lift those families. We lost two giants in the faith last week. So we want you all in your daily prayer time to please keep the families of Bishop Ford and Bishop Rance Allen lifted. Amen. As God has transitioned them from, from labor to reward. And we know, those of us that know God, know the absence from the body <laughs> is to be present with the Lord. So we're praying for their families that God continues to keep their churches and moving them forward. Because even though the messenger died, the message still, still lives on. So we ask that you all would keep, um, keep those giants in the faith lifted in prayer. As well as our men's ministry this Saturday. At 12 o'clock, November the 7th, 12 o'clock right here at God's Will Christian Fellowship. Amen? Amen. If our hearts and minds are prayer, God bless you. We want to have our benediction. Once again, we'd like to say thank you, Prophetess Stephanie, for hearing from God and continuing to allow God to speak through her. Um, it's ironic. She's been working and hasn't been able to be here on Wednesday night. And uh, she's right there where we at. Amen. In Romans. Amen. I hadn't reached eight yet. Amen. But I'm coming. Amen. But we thank God for putting her in that vein and allowing us to hear a word that conditions and encourages, encourages our heart. Also, don't forget to keep our sick and shut in lifted in your prayers as well. Every head bowed, every eye closed, we head toward our benediction. Thank you, oh God, once again for the, the opportunity to come before your presence, Lord. We thank you for the reminder, the encouragement that our hope is in you, oh God. And no matter what may come our way, the suffering that we have to endure is not worthy to be compared with the glory that you have in store, which you have yet to reveal in us. So we thank you, oh God, for preparing a way. We thank you for preparing the table. We thank you for the finished work that you've provided a way of escape for us that even death don't get the victory. We thank you for sending your darling son Jesus to secure us on into eternity. And God, we thank you for that word designed to strengthen us, encourage us, to help us become more and more like you each 
in every day. So God, we ask as we depart from this place, from under your presence, that you, you would allow your traveling grace to accompany us, help us make it safely to our destinations. In Jesus' name we do pray. We love you, God. We thank you. All of those who agree with us, God, say amen.